A verse-by-verse -verse study in the Book of Psalms, ESV, with Irv Rish, Chapter 12. What does Psalms Chapter 12 mean? The Bible does not shy away from recording honest human complaints. Faced with evil or persecution, believers sometimes ask, Where are you, God? David's opening lines of this psalm resemble remarks made in other Old Testament passages, Habakkuk 1 verses 2-4, Psalm 22 verse 1. As usual, Scripture brings those comments into context, showing that God will always vindicate His people, eventually. David mourns over what seems to be a complete lack of good people, in a poetic sense, everyone has become a double-talking liar, Psalm 12 verses 1-2. In response, David calls on God to judge these wicked people. To flatter means to heap praise on someone, in contexts such as this, it implies dishonest or exaggerated compliments. These are usually given to soften someone up, lowering their guard so they can be taken advantage of. Much as he noted in other Psalms, Psalm 10 verses 6 and 13, David sees arrogance in these wicked people. They think their smooth talk and deception will keep them from any consequences, Psalm 12 verses 3 to 4. Also echoing his other Psalms, David connects wickedness with an abuse of the poor and weak, Psalm 9 verse 12. 10 2 3. His earlier despair and anguish are balanced by a trust in God. He knows God will, in the end, ultimately judge evil, Psalm 12 verse 5. Verse 6 makes a direct contrast to the lies and insincerity of the wicked. God's words, including His written word, are compared to ultra-refined precious metals. The refining process removes impurities and lesser metals, leaving only the pure, valuable substance. Seven is the biblical number of perfection, so this implies that God's Word is absolutely perfect in its purity, Psalm 12 verse 6. The end of the psalm returns to the same theme as the beginning. Humanity is saturated with corruption and evil. The Bible uses the term, generation, to refer to family trees, such as fathers and sons. It also uses the term in reference to cultures or societies. This generation, from which the poor will be protected, are these liars and deceivers mentioned in prior verses. In the New Testament, Peter will echo the idea of evil hunting like a predator, 1 Peter 5 verse 8. The term translated, vileness, implies something cheap or worthless, instead of honoring the refined silver of God's word, mankind tends to prefer inferior lies and deceptions, Psalm 12 verses 7 to 8. Chapter Context This psalm reveals a basic contrast between the words of deceitful, flattering evildoers and the pure, reliable words of God. David laments the speech and behavior of a proud, deceitful culture. This brings to mind similar complaints from the Old Testament, Habakkuk 1 verses 2 to 4, Psalm 22. He also expresses assurance that the Lord will protect him and all the righteous from their wicked contemporaries, Psalm 3 verse 3. Collapse Verse by verse Verse 1. Save, O Lord, for the godly one is gone, for the faithful have vanished from among the children of man. David prays for deliverance from an evil culture. He laments the decline of faithful believers. As with many statements in Psalms and Proverbs, this presents a natural human perspective. From David's point of view, it seems there are no good people left. Scripture presents several instances of God's followers suffering when they felt alone in a godless culture. Lot made a very bad choice, to move near, then into, Sodom, Genesis 13 verses 10-13. There, his soul was grieved by the decadence of those who surrounded him. Peter states, For as that righteous man lived among, the wicked people of Sodom, day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard, 2 Peter 2 verse 8. Writing to the Philippian believers, Paul describes the culture of Philippi as, crooked and twisted, contrasting the wickedness of the culture with the righteous testimony of the believers, Philippians 2 verse 15. He describes godly people as shining lights in the world, Matthew 5 verse 16. Many years after David, 
the prophet Elijah decried the faithlessness of the people of Israel. He also mourned as if he was the only God-honoring person left in the land, 1 Kings 18 verse 22, 1910. The term used in this psalm's introduction, Sheminith, is often left untranslated. It is apparently related to the Hebrew word for eight or eighth. This instruction might refer to an eight-stringed instrument or some other musical requirement. Context Summary Psalm 12 verses 1-4 is a prayer of deliverance from proud, evil people who spread lies. David sees a perilous decline of righteous individuals. From his perspective, it seems as if the entire world has turned to evil. The wicked employ lies, flattery, and hypocrisy. They assume their actions won't result in consequences. Therefore, David prays for the Lord to put an end to such wicked people. Verse 2. Everyone utters lies to his neighbor, with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. Scripture does not specify exactly what situation David was facing when he wrote this song. His lament that the entire world seems to have turned to evil, Psalm 12 verse 1, resembles other expressions of frustration found in the Old Testament, Habakkuk 1 verses 2-4, Psalm 22 verse 1. This psalm grieves over a culture replete with deceptive smooth talk, dishonesty, and fraud. This was so rampant that David indicts everyone as practicing it, he uses the same exaggeration for effect a modern speaker might employ by saying, no one cares about the poor, today. Fraud and dishonest flattery were sins employed often by David's enemies. David's son Absalom used flattery to steal the hearts of the people. 2 Samuel 15 verses 5-6 says, And whenever a man came near to pay homage to him, Absalom, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Thus Absalom did to all of Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. False teachers appeared in the first century church and used dishonest compliments to gain a following, Galatians 4 verse 17. Paul, for his part, refused to fawn over other people to gain their approval. He tells the Thessalonian believers, For we never came with words of flattery, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed, God is witness, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 5. Verse 3. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that makes great boasts. David is embroiled in what seems like an entirely dishonest, completely ungodly culture, Psalm 12 verses 1-2. This is probably a deliberate exaggeration, known as hyperbole, something seen elsewhere in the Bible, Psalm 18 verse 34, Matthew 7 verse 3, Proverbs 4 verse 16. This also echoes other Old Testament complaints offered towards God about the prevalence of evil, Habakkuk 2 verses 1-4, Psalms 22 verse 1. Scripture gives no details about exactly what prompted David to write this psalm. He prays for the Lord to silence the false talkers, who flatter and boast. These evil ones are assured of their sins, thinking there will be no consequences, Psalm 12 verse 4. Every generation has an abundance of big talkers. They use arrogance, bragging, smooth talk, and lying compliments to deceive and dominate. Daniel 7 verses 23-26 refers to an evil figure who will come to power in the end times tribulation period. He speaks words against God and persecutes God's people, Daniel 7 verse 25. But after three and a half years, this big-talking leader faces sudden judgment. He and his kingdom will be consumed and destroyed, Daniel 7 verse 26. This end-time Antichrist and his allies take their lead from the old serpent, the devil, whose evil words seduced Eve. She fell for his lies and denial of God's prediction of death for disobeying his will, Genesis 3 verses 1-6. Someday, however, an angel will descend from heaven, seize the devil, bind him for a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, Revelation 20 verses 1-3. Ultimately, the devil who deceives the nations will spend eternity in the lake of fire, Revelation 20 verse 10. Verse 4. Those who say, With our tongue we will prevail, our lips are with us, 
who is master over us. This discloses the crass attitude of the proud boasters. Both in David's era, Psalm 12 verses 1 to 3, and today, arrogant, big talkers, assume they will always get away with deceptive language. Their ability to take advantage of weak or desperate people leads them to think they won't have to answer to anyone. Modern culture, especially, overflows with those whose speech is corrupt. Technology and social media have made it easier for us to communicate, but this has also given arrogance and flattery a larger platform. The people depicted in David's complaint boast, slander others, curse, and profane God's holy name. The commandment, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, Exodus 20 verse 7, means nothing to them. They have no sense of accountability to God or man. Those who revel in abusive, lying, foul, or deceptive speech believe their tongues are key in their quest for control of others. However, the Apostle James differs with that notion. He writes, No human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison, James 3 verse 8. Proud, evil boasters are not using their tongues, their tongues are their masters and use them. Revelation 21 verse 8 identifies the lake of fire as the final destination of those who live and breathe by their own lies. Verse 5. Because the poor are plundered, because the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord, I will place him in the safety for which he longs. In other Psalms, David connected evil to abuse of the poor and helpless, Psalm 9 verse 9, 10 colon 2. In prior verses, he has complained that everyone around him has turned to deceptive speech and evil, Psalm 12 verses 1 to 4. Here, David envisions God finally having enough of wickedness and choosing to act, Romans 2 verse 5. This statement seems to be quoted later by the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 33 verse 10, referring to God's judgment. In the time of Moses, the Hebrews were slaves in Egypt, and their taskmasters treated them badly. However, the Lord saw the Hebrews' affliction and heard their cries. He told Moses, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them, Exodus 3 verses 7-8. Jesus assured his followers they have no reason to fear, because God sees even the sparrows fall, and he cares for his own, Matthew 10 verses 29-31. Writing to the twelve tribes of the dispersion, James assures his persecuted readers that God knows their troubles and will punish their oppressors, James 5 verses 1-6. He appeals to his readers to wait patiently for the coming of the Lord, James 5 verses 7-8. Context Summary Psalm 12 verses 5-8 comes after David described oppressors of the poor and needy who boasted about their deeds and felt no accountability. In this section, David expresses assurance that God will intervene on behalf of the oppressed. The wicked spoke lies and deceptive words, but David reflects upon the Lord's words as pure and dependable. He is confident that the Lord will protect the afflicted. Verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words like silver refined in a furnace on the ground purified seven times. A theme of David's writing is full confidence in God's goodness, His wisdom, and His word, Psalm 18 verse 30, 33 verse 4, 40 colon 8. Here, David uses the example of refining precious metals to explain the perfection and purity of God's word. Metals such as silver and gold are separated from impurities by melting, this burns away most of the worthless material. Repeating this process, using different techniques or by adding other chemicals, can further separate out undesirable substances. Here, David refers to the number of perfection, 7, applying it to the refinement of God's Word. The Lord's statements are perfect and complete. No one can improve on them, nor should anyone add to them. Unlike the lies and flattery used by the oppressors of the poor and needy to achieve their wicked goals, Psalm 12 verse 2, the Lord's words are true and reliable. In his prayer for his followers, Jesus asks the Father to sanctify them by his word. He adds, Your word is truth, John 17 verse 17. 
Psalm 119 verse 72 puts a higher value on the word of the Lord than on a great number of gold and silver pieces. God's word brings the knowledge of salvation and the power to lead a righteous, effective life, 2 Timothy 3 verses 15 to 17. Verse 7. You, O Lord, will keep them, you will guard us from this generation forever. Those being protected, here, are poor and oppressed people who are being abused by wicked men, Psalm 12 verses 3 to 5. David trusts God to guard his people from the generation of proud, deceptive, violent people, Psalm 12 verses 1 to 2. The term, generation, as used here, can be a reference to a culture or a society. It can also refer to major attitudes or groups within a culture. In that sense, there are two main generations mentioned in Scripture. There is the generation of the righteous, Psalm 14 verse 5, also called the generation of those who seek Him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob, Psalm 24 verse 6, the generation of your children, Psalm 73 verse 15, and the generation of the upright, Psalm 112 verse 2. In sharp contrast to this righteous generation is the lying generation David mentions in this verse. The Apostle Paul refers to this latter generation as a crooked and twisted generation, Philippians 2 verse 15. The Lord protects His people from the generation that insults Him and persecutes His people. Jesus acknowledged in John 16 verse 33 that believers will be persecuted, but He promised His peace and said, Take heart, I have overcome the world. Jude 1 verses 24-25 ascribes praise to the Lord for His protection of His people all the way to heaven. Verse 8. On every side the wicked prowl as vileness is exalted among the children of man. This lament circles back to the first words of this psalm, Psalm 12 verse 1. From David's viewpoint, wicked people are everywhere. Like predators, they stalk the poor and helpless from all angles, Psalm 12 verses 2-5. This is much like Satan, who hunts like a lion, looking for spiritual prey, 1 Peter 5 verse 8. As a result of this pervasive evil, vileness, is praised throughout the land. The word translated, vileness, in the ESV is used only here in the Old Testament. The term implies something cheap, low quality, or inferior. In this context, David is using the word in direct contrast to the Word of God, which is as precious as seven times refined silver, Psalm 12 verse 6. Since God's words are good and holy, Psalm 18 verse 30, the opposite of this would be something disgusting, or a vile. As in David's time, modern culture puts a high value on what is actually worthless or cheap. It exalts such things as immorality, the love of money, alcoholism, lewdness, disregard for law and order, egotism, vandalism, and spiritual arrogance. What God condemns in the Ten Commandments, wicked people not only embrace but also recommend to others, Romans 1 verse 32. Paul describes such people as bound for destruction. He writes that, their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things, Philippians 3 verse 19. End of Psalm 12 Please note The material used in this post, video is from Bibliref.com which is from God Questions Ministries and is posted here to be read by Immersive Reader in the Edge browser. If you copy this material please follow these rules. Content from Bibliref.com may not be used for any commercial purposes, or as part of any commercial work, without explicit prior written consent from God Questions Ministries. Any use of our material should be properly credited, please make it clear the content is from Bibliref.com. Bibleref.com content may not be altered, modified, or otherwise changed unless such changes are specifically noted.